before. All right, good morning. We'll try this mic, I guess. <clears throat> We're going to start with gathering hymns out of the red hymnal, page 532. Let's gather us in one, two, and four. Good morning. Welcome all of you to worship this morning at First English Lutheran Church. If you haven't done so yet, please fill out the friendship pad, send them down and back, and greet one another, and especially any guests that we may have with us this morning when the opportunity presents itself. Everyone's also invited downstairs following worship for a time of coffee and fellowship, and we will try to start our annual meeting right around 10.30, a little earlier if everybody's getting bored downstairs. So we'll see what happens there. And there's no Sunday school or adult class today. Annual reports, there are some out right now. The rest of them will come out following worship so you can have access to one. Uh, we welcome those worshiping by means of KDIO as well as later on to those listening or worshiping at Fairway View by our tape ministry. We thank those making the tape possible today. And the broadcast itself is sponsored by your gifts to the endowment fund. That's just one small way that the endowment fund does so many things as we reach outward with those funds. Our confirmation youth and mentors will be having a training session at Fairway View at 10.30 this morning, and we appreciate their willingness to help us Sunday worship there because that is also a large blessing. End of the year giving statements continue to be out in the narthex. We'll be mailing them at the end of the month, but to help save on postage, if you can pick yours up, that would be appreciated. Next Sunday, there will be a youth fundraiser breakfast for this summer's coming servant trip. The youth will also be leading us in worship next Sunday. Uh, if you are going to be part of that, make sure that you are here Wednesday for practice. And the submarine sandwich sale continues as well. We also give a special thanks to Nancy Rond and the youth for serving the Just for the Love of It Supper this past Wednesday. Uh, the office will be closed tomorrow because of the Martin Luther King holiday. I'm around if you need me, just call my cell phone number.
Uh, there's some information in the bulletin regarding a dementia awareness training, which is here on the 31st of the month. If you would like to attend that, it's a free lunch, a short training, and then resources if you know someone who is caring for someone or if you are caring for someone with dementia. We hope this will be a very valuable thing for all of us. So let us know if you'd like to attend and we will RSVP for you. Are there any announcements I'm overlooking this morning? Other than that, um, the flowers by the altar are from Lee Falgren and the family of Elaine. So we thank them for that and keep the family of Elaine Falgren in your prayers as well. Please rise for the greeting and sharing of the peace. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Please take a moment to greet one another. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who calls us into an everlasting hope, who guides us to springs of the water of life, who enlightens us with the spirit of wisdom. Amen. Please be seated. We'll continue with our song of mercy. Lord, have mercy. Trust in God's promise of forgiveness. Let us confess our sin against God and one another. O God, our merciful Redeemer, we confess the ways we live only for ourselves. We fail to see you in our neighbor's face. We turn our ears from voices that cry out. We pass by the hungry and the oppressed. In your great mercy, 
Forgive our sin and strengthen us for service to all in need. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for you. And for his sake, God forgives you all your sin. Blessed are you. Rejoice and be glad. Live with gratitude and grace as forgiven people of God. Amen. We continue with our song of praise, You Sing Over Me. join together in the prayer of the day. Lord God, source of every blessing, you showed forth your glory and led many to faith by the works of your Son, who brought gladness and salvation to his people. Transform us by the spirit of his love, that we may find our life together in him, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The reading can be found beginning on page 536 of the Old Testament in the Pew Bibles. The people's return to Judah after the exile was marred by economic and political troubles. Nevertheless, the prophet declares, Jerusalem and Judah will be restored. God will rejoice over Jerusalem as a bridegroom rejoices over his bride and the people are called to the celebration. A reading from Isaiah, the 62nd chapter, beginning with the first verse. For Zion's sake I will not keep silent, and for Jerusalem's sake I will not rest, until her vindication shines out like the dawn, and her salvation like a burning torch. The nation shall see your vindication, and all the kings your glory, and you shall be called by a name, new name that the mouth of the Lord will give. You shall be a crown of beauty in the hand of the Lord, 
and a royal diadem in the hand of your God. You shall no more be termed forsaken, and your land shall no more be termed desolate. But you shall be called, My delight is in her, and your land married. For the Lord delights in you, and your land shall be married. For as a young man marries a young woman, so shall your builder marry you. And as the bridegroom rejoices over the bride, so shall your God rejoice over you. The word of the Lord. The reading can be found beginning on page 133 of the New Testament in the Pew Bibles. The congregation at Corinth experienced division as people were comparing one another's spiritual gifts, thinking some to be superior to others. Paul invites his fractured community to trust that God's Holy Spirit has gifted them all perfectly for their mission together. A reading from 1 Corinthians, the 12th chapter, beginning with the first verse. When I came to you, brothers and sisters, I did not come proclaiming the mystery of God to you in lofty words or wisdom, for I decided to know nothing among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. And I came to you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling. My speech and my proclamation were not with the plausible words of wisdom, but with a demonstration of the spirit and of power, so that your faith might rest not on human wisdom, but on the power of God. Yet among the mature we do speak wisdom, though it is not a wisdom of this age or of the rulers of this age who are doomed to perish. But we speak God's wisdom, secret and hidden, which God decreed before the ages for our glory. None of the rulers of this age understood this, for if they had, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But, as it is written, what no eye has seen, nor ear heard, nor the human heart conceived, what God has prepared for those who love him. These things God has revealed to us through the Spirit, for the Spirit searches everything, even the depths of God. For what human being knows what is truly human, except the human spirit that is within? So also no one comprehends what is truly God's, except the Spirit of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be God. I invite the children to come forward at this time. Good morning, how are you? Did you get all the snow shoveled? No? Brent, Brent doesn't make you shovel snow? I think we should work on that, Brent. <laughs> and how's Sarah? Did you enjoy your day off on Friday? Did you study? Okay, good, good. Did you get a day off school on Friday? No, you didn't? Oh. So, a question for you today. We'll let Archer be the designated reader. What's the word? Miracle. Miracle. That's a big word. What do you think it means? Pardon? That's how you start your name? That's pretty good. So, you, And you know what? I bet to your mom and dad you were a miracle too. So that's a good one. Didn't even plan that one, Kirsten. <laughs> so what is a miracle? So that's very good. Something only God can do. It's something that can't be explained. Now here, I've got this bottle and it's got kind of layers, doesn't it? So if I shake it up, it looks all funky light blue. And if we wait long enough, the contents of that bottle are probably as old as I am. So it might take a little longer to do things than usual. But eventually, and if you watch that bottle, It'll look just like it did before I shook it up. Now, is that a miracle? No, it's just something. How that works can be explained. And if it can be explained, it's not a miracle. 
So Jesus did miracles. And the first miracle Jesus did, we're going to read from the children's Bible today. We'll read the adult version a little later, but the first miracle. Jesus went to a wedding with his mother, Mary, and his disciples. Mary heard the servant say, there is no more wine. What can we do? Mary told the servants, do what Jesus tells you to do. Jesus said, fill up six jars of water, dip out a cup and give it to your master. When they did, they saw wine instead of water. The servants were amazed. When their master tasted the wine, he told the groom, you have saved the very best wine for last. The disciples were also amazed. This was Jesus' first miracle. So the first miracle of Jesus was at a party. And what was the miracle? He turned water into wine. Now that's not the important thing. What's important is why he did that miracle. Because it said at the end, people were amazed and they believed. So now how would you feel if you had a birthday party and you only you invited 12 people and you only had enough food for three? How would you feel? You'd probably look and say, Mom, what's going on here? Or what if you didn't have enough food or prizes? Would you feel bad? Or if you were at a party and there, you were the last one in line? What if you're the last one in line for lunch and the cook says, sorry, we're out? You'd probably feel a little bad. And that's why Jesus did this miracle, because the people hosting the party would have been really embarrassed and ashamed, and they would have felt bad. So through this, Jesus showed that he came to help people, not to do magic. He always did things for other people. And do you know that's how we can be part of a miracle? How do you think each of us could be part of a miracle? I can't turn water into wine. I can slowly turn layers back into dark blue and light blue and eventually clear. But that's an old science experiment. How can we be part of a miracle? The way we can be part of a miracle and everybody gathered here is if we see hatred, what should we show instead? Love. If we show hurt, what should we do instead? If we see someone hurting, help heal them, yes. Make them feel better. By, what we, by doing whatever we can to make things better, we are part of a really, really big miracle. So maybe individually we can't do miracles, but we can be part of one and because we are there for others. And even if you don't really like someone, you can still be part of a miracle because where there is unkindness, what can we do? We can show kindness. And that's my prayer for you this week, that you can be part of a miracle at home and at school. And because you also remember like you said, you are a miracle, right? Each of you is. Thank you for joining me today, and please rise if you are able for the gospel acclamation.
The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the second chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. On the third day, there was a wedding in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Jesus and his disciples had also been invited to the wedding. When the wine gave out, the mother of Jesus said to him, They have no wine. And Jesus said to her, Woman, what concern is that to you and to me? My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, do whatever he tells you. Now standing there were six stone water jars for the Jewish rites of purification, each holding 20 or 30 gallons. Jesus said to them, fill the jars with water, and they filled them up to the brim. He said to them, now draw some out and take it to the chief steward. So they took it. When the steward tasted the water that had become wine and did not know where it came from, Though the servants who had drawn the water knew, the steward called the bridegroom and said to him, Everyone serves the good wine first, and then the inferior wine, after the guests have become drunk. But you have kept the good wine until now. Jesus did this, the first of his signs in Cana of Galilee, and revealed his glory, and his disciples believed in him. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. We'll continue with our morning anthem by our senior choir, Sing When the Spirit Says Sing.
Thank you, and hats off to whoever hit that high note. <laughs> this is the day that our Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Our gospel lesson this morning, as we mentioned with the children, was about Jesus' very first miracle. Do you find anything unique about this first miracle? Where was it? At a party. Someone I asked earlier this morning said it involved alcohol. But that wasn't the point. The point is it was at a party. That reminds me last fall on the Sunday of Rally Sunday, a little boy sitting up in the front was very, very excited. And when we asked him what was going on today, he said, we're going to a great big party. And if you think about it, wouldn't that be great if each Sunday felt like a large party or a celebration? Now, biblical scholars compare the Gospel of John to peeling away the layers of an onion because there are many layers of meaning in the verses of this Gospel. And our story this morning is of no exception. There's a lot of symbolism here, which the people of Jesus' day could understand. If we look at verse 1, we see the words, On the third day, there was a wedding in Cana, and the mother of Jesus was there. What, do you, what strikes you about that verse? Day. Which day? The third. What does that bring to mind? The resurrection of Jesus. On the third day, he rose again. Or Jonah. How many days in the fish? Three. Three? Good. So we move on then to verse 2, and it was a family affair. Mary was there, and Jesus and his friends were also invited. So we know that they knew the people that were hosting the party. And we move on to verse 3. What's surprising here? Not that they ran out of wine, but Mary spoke. What did women not do in public in the days of Jesus? They didn't speak. They were not allowed to. So in here, Mary asked Jesus for help. There's an old myth that says that Joseph was not a very good carpenter, and Jesus was always fixing things for him. Now, Mary must have known by this time that Jesus could indeed fix things, otherwise she probably wouldn't have said they have no wine. And Mary here, I believe, proves herself to be the very first church lady. Because FELCW members, what do you fear more than anything else? <laughs> Running out of food, that's exactly correct. So at the time of Jesus, hospitality was even more important than it is today. The host was expected to provide more than enough for everyone. And wedding celebrations back then lasted for a full week. So you can imagine what they would have to have. And running out, the embarrassment would have been beyond belief. Mary wanted to help the host miss out on that embarrassment. So we move on then to verses 4 and 5. Jesus says, What concern is that to you and to me? My hour has not yet come. Where, did we hear, where do we hear those words? Right before Jesus died, he says, My hour has not yet come. And then later on, Jesus will say, my hour has come. And then we look at verse 5. This tells us two things about Mary. First of all, she had faith because she just simply said to the servants, do whatever he tells you. And the second thing we can see in this verse is Mary was influential because she gave the servants orders and expected them to obey. So Mary was an influential person at this wedding. And we move on then to verse 6. Six stone water jars for the Jewish rites of purification. Now, for the people of Jesus' day, the perfect number was seven. Seven days in creation, seven days in a week. Seven was the number of completeness. And here there were six jars. So it, this number represents incompleteness. There wasn't enough wine. They were filled with water for purification. But the whole thing was incomplete. Then in verses 7 and 8, now is the million-dollar question. How did Jesus do this miracle? 
Quentin, do you have any idea? If you do, explain, because I have no idea. I have no idea how Jesus did this miracle. He just said, fill the jars with water. And he said, now take some out and take it to the chief servant. So Jesus said, kind of like creation, wasn't it? God said. Jesus used his word. And the book of John begins with the words, in the beginning was the word. And Jesus was the word. Then in verses 9 and 10, the new wine is the best wine. This represents the kingdom of God, the new kingdom, the best and full kingdom of God. And who is the first to know about this miracle? The servants. One in the host. It wasn't the groom. It wasn't the very important people gathered at this wedding. It was the least. Does that kind of remind you of Christmas Eve? Who was the first to know about the birth of Jesus? The lowly shepherds. The people on the outside looking in, those on the fringes of society. And this brings us back now to the location of that first miracle. It was at a wedding feast. And those two words are also used many times in scripture as a symbol of God's kingdom, a feast, a banquet. And we have that relationship. Later on in the epistles, Paul calls Christ one, the bridegroom and the church is the bride. That's the relationship between God and between us, God's people. And we notice in verse 11, John doesn't call them miracles. He calls them signs. If you were to read the entire book of John, anyone care to predict how many signs there might be in the book of John? The perfect number. There are seven. So it takes us back to that number again. Now the next question. Aren't you glad you sat up front today? <laughs> Why did Jesus do miracles? To help. That's exactly right. He didn't do them to show off. He didn't do them to prove he was God, although it did. He, all of his miracles were done to help someone else. In this case, he helped two groups. He helped the host family avoid embarrassment, which would have been something they would never live down. And he also helped his disciples grow in faith. So the miracles reveal who Jesus is to the world. And that reminds me of the star that led the wise men to the stable, just like the, or to the house where Jesus lived, just like the star led the wise men, miracles point to Jesus as well. So the disciples and the wise men got to experience the revelation of God firsthand. A question for you this morning, how do you experience God's revelation today? Someone sitting in our congregation told me once that she experienced God on the golf course. In nature, that beauty of nature. Personally, no offense to them, but I don't play golf because it ruins a perfectly good walk for me. <laughs> if you've ever seen me golf, you would understand. What are some other ways we experience God? Darren, you experience God in the combine in the fall? Better believe it. What else were you going to say? Babies. Babies. Mm -hmm. Yes. We yeah, come in spring, come in the fall. Come in the spring and fall. I'm sure Jim would agree with that one. How, what are some other ways we experience God's presence? Mm -hmm. Through the actions of others towards us. All you have to do is look around. Justine, you experience God through your sisters sometimes, don't you? Yep, she's nodding her head because she's afraid not to, one sitting on either side of her. Carol? God my Yes, that's experiencing God's revelation. That's experiencing God. So there are many ways, and that's why Epiphany is a time where we look for God's presence. It's a time for light to shine in darkness, it's a time for transformation. The first miracle is the story of Epiphany because the light came on for the disciples. Now there is an element of mystery here for us. We don't know how Jesus turned water into wine. We don't know how a cross can be a sign of new life. We don't know how dying can lead to rising. 
We don't know why bad things happen to good people, why people get cancer. We don't know why. We don't know how or why Jesus can be truly God or truly human, or how he can be present in a small little wafer and a sip of wine. We don't, or the biggest one, how a motley group of sinners, a group like us, can be the body of Christ. We can never fully comprehend, but thanks to the Holy Spirit, as we heard in one of our songs this morning, we believe so we can see. Amen. Please rise for our affirmation of faith. We are not alone. We live in God's world. We believe in God who has created and is creating, who has come in Jesus, the word made flesh, to reconcile and to make new, who works in us and others by the Spirit. We trust in God. We are called to be the church, to celebrate God's presence, to live with respect and creation, to love and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus crucified and risen, our judge and our hope. In life, in death, in life beyond death, God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. Amen. Please be seated. We will continue with our morning offering and our offering song, What You Gonna Preach? What you gonna preach by the life you live? What you gonna preach by the way you give to the people you love and the people you meet? What is the sermon that you're gonna preach? We deliver a sermon every day. What is the message they will hear us say? Actions are louder than the words we speak. Oh, what you gonna preach? Shall we come to the church on Sunday? To hear what you know. We're preaching, sending our message. So clear, but it's not what you say. Spend your time. People all around will see and hear the sermon you're preaching out loud and clear. So think about what you're gonna preach by the life you live, what you're gonna preach by the way you give to the people you love. And the people you meet, what is the sermon that you're gonna preach? We deliver a sermon every day. What is the message they will hear us say? Actions are louder than the words we speak. Oh, what you gonna preach? So do we seek first the kingdom? Or is it money and power we chase? Do we hate our brother and hold a grudge? Or forgive a sister with grace? Do we lay up our treasures in heaven above? Do we give through the Spirit with the Spirit of love? Friends and family can plainly see so the question comes back to you and me. So think about what you're gonna preach by the life you live. What you're gonna preach by the way you give to the people you love and the people you meet. What is the sermon that you're gonna preach? We deliver a sermon every day. What is the message they will hear us say? Actions are louder than the words we speak. 
nations are louder than the words we speak. Oh, what you gonna preach through your living? Oh, what you gonna preach through your giving? What are we? Please rise for prayer. United as one body in Christ, let us pray for the church, the world, and all in need. Almighty God, guide your church in all its forms. Strengthen bishops, pastors, deacons, and all who are your people in ministry. Pour out, pour out your spirit and make us bold to proclaim your message of love, mercy, and justice. Lord, in your mercy. You fill your creation with blessings, and we thank you. Send relief to areas affected by storm, disaster, heat, or cold, and move us to be wise stewards and to share all you give to us. Lord, in your mercy. Your Guide leaders and decision makers toward the well-being of all that you place in their care. Strengthen those who work to uphold human rights for the sake of the dignity of all people. Shelter communities threatened by violence, and show us all the way of peace. Give our government and our leaders the wisdom to find a way to end this shutdown and to care for all who are affected by it. Keep safe all who continue to serve and work to keep peace and order in our world, especially Michael, Emily, and George, and all who serve in areas of conflict. Bless and strengthen those who give of their time and work to keep our roads safe during the winter season. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Give needed comfort to all who are in need, who face a lack of shelter, who struggle with debt who suffer with chronic pain, who grieve, who are facing end of life, who are fighting cancer or are ill in any way. Especially do we remember those in assisted living and long-term care, and also Mark, Burl, Nikki, Lee, Jim, Marlo, Barb, Mariah, Vi, Jesse, Jerry, Mark, Gail, Betty, Erlise, Aaron, Cy, Megan, Gordy, Jessica, Anders, Matthew, Paulette, Carolyn, Paul, Vernon, Lauren, Larry, Natalie, Jeanette, John, Anders, Merlin, Sean, Bella, Christopher, Dorothy, Christina, Terry, Kelvin, Gwen, and those we name silently in our hearts at this time. Strengthen all who are caregivers or who work at to give care and give each of them your peace, Lord, and your mercy. Your Send your Holy Spirit to transform this assembly. Fill us with your life so that we reflect you and pour out your love and service to the world. Keep us looking outward rather than inward. Bless those among us who are our guests and be with those not here with us today. Unite us all in your love, Lord, in your mercy. Your Receive our prayers and fill us with the radiance of your love through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now may the love of God surround you, the grace of Christ release you, and the Holy Spirit be your guide and strength now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Go in peace, sent out by the Spirit to serve and share God's love with gratitude and grace. Okay, okay we, we will. will. You may be seated. Our sending song, Go in the Grace of the Lord. And Quentin, you get two sermon notes because you actually helped with the sermon today. <laughs>
Thank you, thank you. 